Okay, so I've done um, one control arm. I'm just going to talk through the second one um, for the camera. I've got my servo already pushed in there. Now the wire's coming out at the front, so it's uh, tucked in underneath there. I've just used that little mounting screw hole um, to hold the wire up uh, up in here. And it's quite a firm fit, so you do need to put a bit of pressure in. Otherwise, you could just trim the uh, edges of that hole a little bit. Um, but it's probably nice to be nice and firm, so it's not moving around before we glue it up. So the servos we're not going to hook up yet, they're just in there so that we can aim our control horn, and I'll show you on this one, sort of down a similar line so that it's, it's facing um, the end of the servo arm. So we're going to come out along this joint 50 millimetres, so along this seam with a pen, we can come out 50 millimetres. Then with our control horn, we're going to sit that outside edge on the 50 millimetres. Okay, so the outside edge is on the 50 millimetres, and we're going to try and point that straight in towards that servo, the end of the servo. So not into the centre, and not straight up with the plane, but straight towards the end of the control arm for the servo. Also, we need to make it so that it's not sitting with a base on the seam, but it's sitting back so that if you set a, a ruler at 90 degrees, uh, it'd be touching up against the front of it. So you can do the same thing by looking down and making sure the front line of it is uh, down along the seam, not the base. So it's sitting about five mil back, um, the, the base is anyway. And we want to point that towards the servo arm. With our pen, we can mark out the two holes that we're going to put through. And then just with a small nail, um, the nail, we don't really need to pierce the, the Depron one, but where we're going through the sticky tack, the screw will have a bit of a hard time getting through that, so you can just pierce that one to get it started. Um, and you can even go all the way through. And out on the other side, there's going to be some sticky tape too that you're going to have to pierce through. Um, and So we'll put the two screws now into the control arm, control horn. Free up some space underneath there. Oops. And poke those two screws straight through the aileron. Flip it over. And this part you might need a, a buddy to come and help you. But you just want to firstly cut off these. Um, this bit of tape around the screw so it's not getting in the way. I've just poked mine down there so that the screw head, you've got enough thread that the nylon can start um, self tapping into or can start tapping into the nylon. And again, with that little base plate, it's sort of almost on the front of the 45 degree seam. So that's just showing why we're not putting the control arm further forward because um, the screw wouldn't be screwing through much. So. We need to put it back um, on those two screw holes and might just need to hold it up for a second to, to line these two up. And some sort of buddy to give you a hand. We'll just go to the top one first. Once they're located and started to thread themselves, we can uh, just uh, keep checking that it's facing towards that, that servo arm. And we want to do them up so that they're not pulling, clamping the um, Depron together and changing its shape, but just enough so that they're firm and they're not wobbling around. So at the moment it's still fairly wobbly. Okay, I need to keep going until it doesn't wobble around and doesn't want to twist. And 
and I've got about a millimetre or so of um, thread coming through the bottom as a rough idea. So they feel firm and now we can move on to our elevators and rudder in much the same fashion. Okay, I've just got our third and fourth servo um, for the rudder and the elevator. Uh, I noticed that the setup here is quite close. It's something that I changed in the drawings and it's probably a little bit too close. But all we did is just make sure that the uh, elevator one was in first and then the rudder one's coming across and it fits almost perfectly in there um, without crashing into each other. And the um, elevator leads coming back up on top, so threading through and coming back up. And the rudder one, um, you can just leave coming down this side because all of the servos um, are going to meet up to a, a receiver um, around about here and we'll tidy it all up but that's about where they will meet. So we'll have a look at doing our second um, lot of control horns, uh, the elevator and rudder. This is the sort of packet that they come in, um, so they're, they're stuck together to start with and we just twist them off. So we've got a set, we've got the um, base plate and the control horn. Now to snap off. And we're going to exact the same thing. Um, this this uh, control horn can sit the same sort of length as um, the end of that. So we've got a around about 30 mil um, from that control rod. So I'm going to go out about 30 mil here as well. So 30 mil along this this join. And that can be to the edge of the base plate. We don't really need to be too fussy. Or we'll even go to the centre. So 30 mil to the centre of this one. And again, with our front of that control horn uh, along the seam, not the base plate along the seam. And pointing straight down along the plane. So holding that there. I'll just move the plane up a little bit. On the centre there and on the join, my pen just to mark out those two holes, then my nail to go through and if there's any tape on the bottom side to pierce that, you can hear it pop. Same thing on the bottom, my two screws through the control horn, straight through and my base plate oh. well there you go I didn't even mean to but I've gone either side of the, the carbon rod so that's going to be um, quite an advantage to, to hold that in um, for support and it's not just going to be squeezing the depth rod now, it's going to be squeezing the, uh, the control rod, uh, the carbon rod in as well. So there you go, when you're doing your own, see if you can line up either side of that carbon rod um, so you can get it straight in between. Okay, and as I said in one of the earlier videos, um, we've got the carbon rod underneath so that when we're just pushing this control horn down, because we've only got it on one side, we don't have the control horn on both sides, we've only got it on one side, so we want that one control horn to be able to control um, the whole elevator, which is doing quite nicely there. And finally the rudder control horn um, should really be uh, level down here but it's not going to matter the length that we've got here just to have it up a little bit higher um, so that it's one in the middle of this uh, control surface and also uh, I think that it's going to be stronger up through this tape rather than just through the depth on there. So on the join again facing the control horn um, so I'll get back looks pretty good. Uh, 
front of it on the seam, and then our two dots of the pen, the nails, through the, all the tape, two screws. And obviously uh, we're working on the side that's got the rudder servo. You don't want to be putting it on the other side. And we've done all of our joints. We've put the control horn um, away from the 45. So the 45 is at the bottom. This is where the joints are nice at the front. All of our control horns are the same, just so it's consistent. And that's why the servo is facing out that side. Also, so that there's enough room on here so that the two servo arms aren't clashing. We're just going to flip that over. Just sort of like that, even. Yeah, no one's trying to go around the other side. Mm. Get any of that tape out of the way. Put that base plate straight on. We'll go top first. So there we go, we've got uh, all of our control horns uh, secured, um, they're not flimsy, they're all uh, moving those control surfaces around without wobbling around themselves. And uh, next we're going to have a look at doing these control arms and we'll have a look at the whole power system um, by itself before we start putting it together on the plane.